Hi everyone, Nessie here. Uh, hopefully this is going to be our last video on this folio. Um, it's just finishing touches today. But first of all, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone that has subscribed over the last few days and um, taken me well over the thousand subscriber marks. Um, so excited i can't believe i've actually hit a thousand subscribers and a lot of that is down to um gina at the firefly studio 67 i think she's called um she made one of these folios after watching my tutorial and mentioned me and i know a lot of you have come over from her so thanks to gina and thanks to you now the folio she made was slightly different to mine the layout she's done on the inside is different so what I'll do is I'll um, link it in the description below so you can go and have a look and maybe you could get some inspiration from the way she's done hers or do the way I've done mine or a combination of the two it's up to you it's all just there for inspiration really so I will link her in the description so where did we get up to this one we've matted it all we've done our pockets um i attempted to collage on the front cover <laughs> with my pocket and that's as far as we got so inside i'm just going to embellish a few pages i won't embellish all of them but again that's up to you you can decorate yours the way you want it's there's no rules it's you do what you want to do now, on my first two pages with the slot pockets, I don't add any embellishments. All I do is put journal cards in and tags. Um, I'm not going to show you how I do my journal cards and tags because, in all honesty, it takes quite a while and I think it's quite a boring process to watch. Although I like making them, I think recording them would be boring, especially in something like this, where all I tend to do is um, take the offcuts. I generally just take the offcuts from the sheets and I will back them and sew on them. Um, some I will cut down into tags and put some trim in. But they're just basically the offcuts that are backed with tea dye paper. Tags I don't sew, only journal cards. Uh, like this one, I would definitely back it and I would sew it. And I would probably put a page tab on the top of it. And that would be a journal card. So I'm not going to show you the process of me just backing loads of cards and things. So I wouldn't embellish these two. I would just do... Probably a large journal tag for these pockets and a little tag for those. Um, and then when we come to this side, this is another page I'm not going to embellish. It's got a belly band, a tuck spot in it. I would do a tag for um, the belly band and I would do a tag for, not a tag, I would do journaling cards for these. So a journal card and a journal card on there uh, the envelope I am going to embellish because it is quite plain um, but all I'm going to do on this is a bit of layering attempt to again <laughs> uh, also when you do your journal card that or whatever it is you are going to put into your envelope you want to consider the fact that it has a window and whatever you put in there is going to be seen. So it's actually quite nice to put something that has an image on it. So that when it's in, like so, you can actually see the card, the image. If you just put a plain card in there, it's a bit boring, like I suppose yeah it's not really it's nicer if you have an image a bird or a butterfly or an insect or something that you can see anyway so i went through my tim holtz ephemeras and 
some other ephemeras that I've got left from other kits that I just cut out and keep them because you never know when you might use them and chose what I wanted to put on here because another thing I'm sure you don't want to watch me doing is just rummaging through my stash <laughs> so I have inked these as well and um, I'm just going to layer them down just kind of layer them out lay them out um, I also quite like if you're going to do a bit of um, embellishment putting it a little bit over the window is quite nice so just generally going to do that and also just because I absolutely love it I am going to put some um, gauze on. I use my gauzes as, I don't know if I've told you, I use them as mop cloths. So they end up kind of a little bit tea dyed. So I don't really like the harshness of the white on them. So I will be adding a bit of gauze on this as well. Hopefully we're not going to have any problems with the sun today because the storms are back in Bournemouth. So there's no sun today. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just going to. OK, so let's stick these down first. I think this is actually a bit of um, ephemera from um, an Artie Mays tear sheet and ephemera set this one i'm pretty sure it's from hers these ones are the tim holtz ones so um yeah like i say i have hit the thousand mark now so i am going to give this folio here as a giveaway i'm hoping to do that say monday because i do need to go through and make all the tags and the journal cards for it before i can do the giveaway so what i'll probably do is on monday i'll do a a final flip through of this and um just do a giveaway for it really as a thank you to all of you that's um subscribed and supported me i do i really do appreciate it it's um quite unbelievable for me it's taken me a lot of courage to do this i'm generally quite a shy person if you told me um 18 months ago I'd be doing this I'd be like you must be mad let's just stick this one down that in place for a bit yeah and that is pretty much all I would do on that just to kind of break it up um I think Gina might have put a pocket on the one that she did I'm not sure There we go. And um, I will also going to do something on the back because let's face it, that's not very nice. It's quite ugly. <laughs> so what I've decided to do here on the original, I just did a strip card and a bit of layering on it. But I thought what I would do with this one is I would um, do a pocket. So I've cut this bit out from one of the off cuts that I had and um, I will tell you the measurements but obviously you need to do it to your sizings depending on what envelopes you've used so mine's about two and a half 
by about seven and three quarters on this one and yeah i'm just gonna put it as a side loading pocket um let me ink it because i have not inked it ink it up And then I'm uh, just going to glue it on the three sides. Just like so. And um, then what else I did was I took one of the um, six by six pages that you get in the pad and I um, fussy cut one of the birds out. So I fussy cut these birds out of one of the six by six pages and I'm just going to kind of add that to the bottom. like so and I'm going to put some gauze under it I do love the gauze I'm just going to do a little bit of inking around the edges of this fussy cutting just fussy cut that one out Let's get a little bit more gauze. So yeah, for anyone in the UK, I get this gauze from um, Boots. It's about £4.50 for 5 metres and it just lasts forever. Pulling it out a bit. Do it like so. Just gonna kind of stick it down along the side and then um Stick my bird down. I'm just going to pull that over while I'm sticking him them down. Now, obviously, be careful on whatever you're putting on here. Don't go too close to your hinged edge. stick down all these little bits and there yeah so there that gives you a pocket here now so we could put something in there a little extra I quite like that I quite like the way it holds down the flaps as well to your little envelopes okay so that's that side done now on this side for the large pocket, I want to do a little tuck spot in the corner. Um, I'm probably going to do it this corner because I don't know if I quite like that one. <laughs> it's 
it's a personal preference so again i went through my ephemeras yesterday and um i quite liked the tag so i thought what i would do is put my the tag there as a tuck spot and um I thought I would put a butterfly on it as well. Uh, I chose the yellow butterfly because, I mean, I don't know if you can see it, but the backing paper has the yellow in it, and I thought it picked it up quite nice. And also the page underneath has yellow flowers on, so I picked a yellow butterfly. It's a lot brighter in camera than it is um, in real life. For some reason now I like the tag but I decided I'm going to put some string on the tag because um, tags have string so I'm just going to cut off a bit of this and I'm going to ink that first actually this is one of his um, his uh, botanical ephemera sets and also his um, larger ephemera sets, they, they kind of have a bit of a sheen to them, a bit of a shine. So they don't always ink that well when they've got that shine. And his butterflies have quite a harsh whiteness to them as well. So some of them. This one's not too bad. Right, that softens that down a bit. Okay, so like I was saying, I will just loop this through. Just so that it actually looks like a proper tag and I quite like that look I'm just going to loop it through I'll cut that down a bit it's a bit long and um, I'll just leave that loose in all honesty now I'm going to do it as a tuck spot so um, I'm just going to ink the bottom and the side, not ink, sorry, glue, down here and along here. You could do it as a pocket, but I want to do it as a tuck spot. And um, I'm not going to line it up with my big pocket because I quite like the layered look. So I'm just going to do it a little bit over the pocket. And hold that down and then with the butterfly I'm going to do it here but I'm going to let it overhang so it'll be above the tuck spot and hang over on the page a little bit so I only really want to put glue on this bottom half here a little bit of glue on the bottom half sorry that's in camera not too far over because obviously you need to be able to close it still but I oh that's a bit slippy <laughs> There we go. And then underneath we have our ghost pockets. I do not, I'm not going to embellish my ghost pockets. I'm just going to leave those. There's your ghost pocket. I don't want to add too much bulk to it because I'm going to put a journal in here as well. Don't forget. So, so that's the one side done. And then on this side, I'm not going to do anything here. I'm actually 
I don't actually embellish anything on this side. I'm not going to embellish here, but what I am going to do is the two notebooks and I will show you how I made those notebooks. So the notepads I made out of um, one of the envelopes. So I used one of my envelopes, but you can use anything, a bit of card, you want it to be a bit thicker than, well, I don't know, that is kind of like paper, but you could use anything. And then I use tea dye paper. So for my large notepad, I do three sheets of tea dyed paper. And um, what I do is I tear it. You don't have to, you can cut it, but for my larger notebook I tear it at um oh what did I tear it as I can't remember because those are the measurements of the cover let me measure it for you if I can find what I did with my ruler there's my ruler so these I've teared at I think it's seven yes yeah, seven by three and a half now I don't know, I used to do quilting many, many years ago. So I have one of these and this is what I use to tear mine. So I basically just line it up at three and a half, like so. One, two, three and a half. And I just tear it like that. Then I will do it at seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hold it down, tear it off. That's how I do it. And I do three sheets for the big journal, uh, for the big notebook. But you can obviously do what you want. It's up to you. This is just what I did. So three and no, three and a half, sorry, and seven. Three and a half and seven. And then one more at three and a half. Three and a half. Uh, sorry, I had to pause that for a bit. Bit of a husband crisis there. So, like I was saying, yes, I tear these at four, three and a half by seven. Half by seven. Um, then I got an envelope, like so, and I cut off a piece that is three and three quarters by eight and three quarters so first of all just cut it at three and three quarters which is about here and three quarters and then eight and three quarters. Um, just trim a little bit off of there first. Just trim a little bit off the end so we're cutting that gusset off because we don't want we don't want the gusset. We don't want that. So then I trim it at. eight and three quarters which is there and then what I would do is score it at um, one and a half so we'll score at one and a half one and a half 
and now I want a tab here now I use um, a tab punch board you could if you wanted to just cut this a little bit shorter and punch tab and stick it on but for this one I use my tab board so I want my tab to cut, be here when I fold it down so just mark it here punch it and for this size I would probably do a medium tab and slide it in here I do love these um, boards that you can get from we are memory make keepers there you go misjudged that Just pull never goes right on camera and there is my cover for my larger notepad then I would ink this this I would ink sometimes I will ink all the pages in the notebook but I'm not going to do that what I would do is round this corner though there you go just quickly ink it up I like everything inked you don't have to ink it it's your choice just a little and I would ink the back as well I don't ink the um, underside of the tab because you're not going to see it. Now, what we do, what I do next is I take my papers and then I just slot them under here. Just slot them under where I want them. This is actually from Nick the Booksmith. She does scrap pads like this, fabric ones as well. And then I'm with this one, I'm going to sew across the top. Um, in the past, I have done it where I've punched three holes and sewn it like I would a signature. Uh, which you can do if you don't have a sewing machine, obviously. I have also seen um, people staple them just a couple of staples at the top but I'm going to sew mine and um, I don't sew it on camera so I'll do that in a minute but then I also do a little one a diddy one so I do a diddy notebook and I do this in the exact same way I've done that one I tear my tea dyed paper at three so it's three inches by four so it's three by four and then this piece I cut at um, three and a quarter so it's three and a quarter along this way and five and five eighths up five and five eighths up and score at one and a half inch again score at one and a half inch again do a tab this one I think I do a small tab but again if you don't have a tab board you could just you don't have to put a tab at all if you don't want to it's to totally your choice but what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop it there and sew these and then come back and do the rest with you okay so I'm just going to stop <laughs> Uh, okay, so um, I've sewn my books now, uh, just to let you know that my kids are home, so if you hear shouting in the background or them nattering, I do apologise. Um, 
yeah so I've sewn both of mine just across the top but like I say you don't have to do it like that you can punch your holes and sew it like you would a signature or you can staple it or whatever but that's how I did do mine and then these will go under here like so so what we need to do is put some string into our closure get my string out uh, you can use any string for this floss I suppose you could use ribbon um, twine anything but for this I'm going to just use the wax thread that I use to um, so in the signatures. So I'm just going to cut a bit of that off. And you are literally, am I in camera? Yeah, you just tie it, thread it under and tie it off. Tightly. What am I doing? Pull it tight and trim that down a bit and then your little notebooks um, I t sometimes if I've got some I'll put a little label on there that says notes or something like that but that's personal choice and then that just comes down Wrap it around a few times and trim it off. And that's how I do the notebooks. So that's those pages done. I don't do any embellishments on these, but you could if you wanted to. It's personal choice. And there's the ghost pocket underneath, which I don't do either. And so there, yeah. So really... All that's left is to put your um, eyelets in the centre for it. So I use my crocodile. Now I would usually do about half an inch. So that's the small one. Don't want the small one. For these ones I need the bigger one. So I just mark it at half an inch really. And I use, you can use any that, anything that you like, but I love the, um, I love the really big ones that we, our memory keepers do. These ones, they're a bit bigger. I really love these. Um, so I'm going to use two of these. Are they the same? Let me just check and... I think they are there that one yeah so you just need two eyelets you can use any eyelets you like why isn't that not closing there you go it's closing now right so like I say I don't really mark it or anything like that they're just going to go in the center I do it half an inch in so I know that they're both half an inch in I just pretty much eyeball it punch it it with the fabric you sometimes have to um snip it because it doesn't always take all of the fabric out so you just snip it off like so this one and that's one done turn it over and punch it in do the same on the other side punches it in you don't really want you want the nice side on the outside and then because that bit's not going to be seen so much is it do the same on the other side on the other end pretty much just 
eyeball it you could mark it if you want to but like i say i'm not i'm not a big fan of sitting here and marking everything out so i tend to just eyeball things and i think that's the beauty of junk journals is everything doesn't have to be precise does it and clinch it in there we go and then thread some elastic through um i'm only putting one journal in here so it's you just really need one piece of elastic threaded through um this is just elastic cord really <laughs> you can get it anywhere um just thread a piece through there let me cut it off a bit now when you're doing it you don't want it really really tight tight because it might tear your journal but you do want it tight you don't want it slack let's put it that way you don't want it slack at all because it won't hold anything in if it's slack just tie it off So you, you kind of want it, that's actually probably a bit too loose. It's probably a bit too loose. So I might have to do that a bit tighter. But oh, I don't know, it might hold it. Anyway, so I've also made a journal. I'm not going to show you how to do this. It's just a basic single signature, naked, empty journal. All I've done is taken some tea dyed papers. Um some music papers there's a Edith Holden page in there a little paper bag again some music paper and tea dye paper I've just made it into a signature and sewn it together I took some one of the Tim Holtz cards cut it to size and just folded it in half did a little bit of collaging on the front it's just a basic naked or empty journal whatever you want to call them um, and it's just sewn in with the normal pamphlet stitch and then you just thread it through it just goes through there in the middle like so and then you have your journal inside like so plenty of growth room in that you can put a tie around it if you want so then this is the finished thing you have your cover one flip flip out belly band tuck spot envelope mini envelopes tucks pocket large pocket small tuck spot flips up to a ghost pocket then you have your journal which can be replaced when it's full you can just take it out and put another one in there we have your mini booklets which undoes mini booklets that flips up to your open pocket here envelope pocket in the bottom here and there's a tuck spot underneath um, wrap that round here you have a long side pocket which will flip up to another ghost pocket and then there's another slot pocket there and a pocket on the back so that's all I'm going to do with this series I'm not going to show you how I make my cards like I say because I'm pretty sure you all know how to make your cards the only one I would suggest that you pay particular attention to is the envelope window one because you want something pretty behind your window uh, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to spend the weekend making cards and tags for this and then on monday hope it, it won't be monday i've got to go and see my aunt it will be tuesday i will post the giveaway for this um folio because I reached my 1000 and I really can't thank you all enough 
for the support and the encouragement you give me. It really is so overwhelming and I'm so grateful to all of you. So yeah, I would love to see any folios you make. So please do um, tag me, you know, Nessie's Journals on Instagram. Um, if you're going to do one and do it in the Facebook groups, I'm more known by um, Vanessa Cornick in my Facebook groups. So you, you could tag me in those as well, because I really would love to see what you do and see how you alter them in any way like Gina did. And again, I will put Gina's link in the description below so you can go and have a look and see what she did and maybe do however you want yours. But yeah, I will see you Tuesday for the giveaway. Thanks for watching. Bye.